management. Do it to your fire. You tell your grass, you grow or I'm not going to give you water. You know, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> See, unless you grow, there's no water. That's not how people function. Because when a boss says, do it to your fire, do you do it? You do most of the time, don't you? There's short-term compliance, but what are you sacrificing in the long term? Allegiance, devotion, other things that are important. They're looking for other jobs. And it's been amazing. You look on the television, the things they put hidden cameras up in the workplace. The terrible and dreadful and sick, thing, sick things people do to their bosses. Coffee. Have you seen this? I won't even tell you what they are, but they do. Them because when you push somebody in the corner of that military management, it, it just people, there's long-term consequence. It works in the short term, but it's not going to help you in the long term. Power is an amazing thing. In fact, if you look at the medical community, nurses usually have to follow what doctors say. They're really not supposed to question it. And they did a study with a drug called the estrogen, where, that, where a doctor would call up a nurse, and the, doc, and the nurse didn't know the doctor. And she says, I have a patient there. I want you to administer this drug estrogen. Here's the dose. I'll sign the prescription when I get there. If you know anything about the medical community, those are three big no-no's. Nurse didn't know them. And it was a lethal dose of the drug. What percent of those nurses, just based on, oh, okay, went to go administer that drug? 95%. Because doctor knows what he's talking about. Even when they research pilots and co-pilots, they do tests and, uh, uh, from accidents and airlines. Most of the accidents were, could have been averted, but the co-pilot didn't say anything. Because the pilot what? Oh, the pilot knows what he's talking about. There's that whole power thing again. So it can be good and it can be bad. Then there's trust. Trust is also a small piece of the persuasion pie. You have to develop that trust because you can have the best product in the world, the best offer, but if they don't trust you, will they do business with you? No way. They won't do business with you. Then some people will do personality types, which is important to know personalities, but it's just a small piece. You know the different personalities. Are they amiable? Are they expressive? Dominant. And then there's incentives. This is a shortcut to persuasion, or get, to get what you want is off of people incentives. It's not just one, it's all of them. As many tools as you can in your persuasion pie. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. What is NLP? Neurolinguistic programming, which is a science of uh, how you talk to yourself and your brain and working with other people. Neurolinguistic programming. So the reality is your consumer has changed. They're very different than they were even five, ten years ago, even five years ago. Because what's happening is they're bombarded. According to Advertising Age magazine, they're bombarded with over 5,000 persuasive messages a day. 5,000 persuasive messages a day. So that makes us a little numb. We're hit. What, what are we hit with? <clears throat> where are they coming from? TV, radio, where else? Email, bus signs, internet. Where? Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, we're hit all over the place, and a lot of times we become numb. So we're just hit everywhere. A lot of sometimes you can't even go to the restrooms anymore without seeing advertisements. They're just everywhere. Wherever they can put it, they will put it. Skeptical. People are more skeptical than everyone. They seem burned. They seem programs. They don't. Tr they're not as trusting. And they're more educated than ever before. See, 20 years ago, if you went to go buy a car. You really couldn't do that much research. You just kind of believe the sales rep. Now when you go buy a car or anything else, what do you do? Go on the Internet. You check it out. You get information. Now you can find out what they've paid for the car. You can find out what the cost down the, free, down the street. And so they're becoming more and more educated. So if you're talking about your products, your services, your company, your network marketing company, people will talk to you. They just It's more than that. They're going to go straight to the Internet and see what they can find. So the change dramatically is as far as we're going to work with them. So persuasion is a critical thing. As you look at the, the ultra-prosperous, the ones that are very, very successful, Jim Rohn talked about his life changed when he learned communication and persuasion. Napoleon Hill talks about being the magic agreement. Uh, Dale Carnegie says that there's only one way to get anybody to do anything, and that is by making the other person want to do it. And Donald Trump, in his book, How to Get Rich, says, study the art of persuasion, practice it, develop an understanding of its profound value. And that's why we're going to spend some time with this. This is the skill that they didn't teach you in school. And if they did, they probably taught you the wrong things. Because when you take it on a university level, it's more about the logical side, the statistics, the facts, the figures. But as you know, we're persuaded more by emotion. In fact, I was teaching a public speaking class in the university, and they called me in. I was wondering what they wanted. And they say.